One, drink the ominous bottle. Two, enter a trial chamber. Three, nearby trial spawners have now turned ominous. Four, defeat the tougher mobs and earn the ominous trial key. Yep, you heard correctly. Minecraft really just added a brand new type of vault as well as a new key to unlock it, which adds a new top tier of loot. At the same time, they've added three brand new mace enchantments and boy, are those a lot of fun, as well as some brand new potions, four of them in fact. And at the exact same time, they've added a new way to fight all of the bosses and now a new way to do the raid through the form of the ominous bottle. There is so much that has changed in this latest snapshot, including the final 1.21 feature. That's Mojang's words from this press release, not mine. And so let's go through all of those briefly today in snapshot 24W13A. And for the final time, perhaps in a while, this is the first snapshot in the 13th week of 2024. And this is a very big snapshot. We'll ignore the first impression, which is wow, did they really add Herobrine to the trial chambers? Because instead, I think it's much more important to talk about the brand new potions and the brand new enchantments. These are both very exciting in their own way, but the mace enchantments are the one that really blow me away. And let me show you why that is. So not only can you now officially enchant a mace with any of the normal enchants, so Curse of Vanishing and Mending, just like on Bedrock, but also Unbreaking is now confirmed to be a mace enchantment. Exactly why this didn't work at first is something they haven't clarified, but what they have done instead is something much more fun and added three separate enchantments. There is Density, there is Wind Burst, and there is Breach. So I think Breach is the easiest to explain and perhaps the most PvP focused of all four. This gives you an effectiveness decrease in the armor of your target by 15% per Breach level. In other words, if you're fighting someone with extremely enchanted Neverite, having Breach on a mace is going to be powerful whether or not you're actually using the mace's main selling point, which is the ability to jump on top of and absolutely kill enemies because seven damage plus the ability to knock off 60% of your target's armor means that actually the mace is going to be a fun balance to PvP. But for solo players, uh, you know, indeed, for so you people who play single player survival like me, there's not too much use to the breach. Instead, you'll have much more fun with the wind burst or the density. So density is really Mojang saying to everyone who says, oh, I think they should nerf the mace. No, 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 no. That's not what we're doing instead. So it is worth mentioning that the mace's default damage has gone down, not in terms of the amount you'll see when you're in Minecraft. It's seven attack damage for a normal attack, but the amount that you get per amount that you fall, per, uh, I guess, a block that you fall, has gone down to three damage. And so, uh, where previously it would take six blocks full to kill an Enderman, now it will take you more like, uh, I think that's closer to 10, which is actually quite a serious amount. Assuming this is multiplied by 1.5, it still means about eight blocks, which is about a one third decrease in effectiveness, kind of an important one. However, then they've added density. This gives you an extra one damage per level per block fallen. And so if you wanted to, you could take a mace and you could decide to take it up to four damage, five damage, six damage, seven damage, eight extra damage per block fallen with density five. And to show you how powerful that is, here is an enderman. He has 40 health. I haven't hit him at all. Here is me falling just four blocks down. And here is me, hopefully indeed, one hit KOing an enderman. That is so much health to just go missing in one hit. But that is indeed what you can do. Just in case you're curious about wind burst, by the way, let me break this block and let some witches loose. How is there only one witch in there? Oh, they're all hanging out in the corner. Let me let some witches loose. Oh, they, they don't really believe in doing that. And let's use wind burst and show you what it does because this is one of the most fun enchantments that I think Minecraft has introduced for a while. It is the ability to get a boost up based on the damage that you do downwards. And what's crazy about this is this works starting at one block. So even doing a small jump from here down to there will give me that fun little boost. And this this boost will increase every single time that you land a successive shot. This was an idea for an enchantment from a member of the community, Mr. Meckenstein, and so it's really, really cool to see this actually come to Minecraft. And uh, what's really fun, in my opinion, is you don't have to decide between uh, the ability to damage through armor, the ability to just do more damage when falling, and the ability to have more fun, which is what Windburst does, because you can combine all of these together. So here is me having uh, Windburst and Density, and if I wanted to, I could have Windburst and Breach and Density all on the same mace. And then if you really feel like going crazy, add mending on there. If you feel like going extra crazy, unbreaking too. And if you feel like going literally crazy, then why not throw the curse of vanishing on there as well? You can get a mace of six enchantments on it. And honestly, why wouldn't you want to when you see how this thing works in action? If you're curious about the ominous part of this update, it does cover a lot of different things. Ominous keys, ominous vaults, the ominous effect. But mostly, the simplest way to think about this is a reworking of the bad omen effect. This is what you get 
get when you kill a pillager captain, i.e. one of these guys right here, and it's quite a bit, oh wait, okay, my, sorry, give me a sec guys, let me just do this the fun way, it's quite a bit easier to do now than it is before, if you have a mace that is, but if you are to do this, you don't just get given a, uh, you know, an effect like you did before, it's much, much more fun, because you get one of these bad omen bottles. These bad omen bottles actually come in five separate levels, how you get them, as far as I can tell is random, but this is, again, early days, I'm sure there's some proper distribution, you'll likely get more on hard than on easy, I would imagine. Um, but yeah, the way that this works is, <laughs> oh, wow, even just jumping from the ground gives you one of these great wind bursts, by the way. But yeah, the way you get these bad omen bottles is still kind of up in the air. You get some from vaults and trial chambers, you get some from killing the uh, pillager outposts, and they're effectively using these to merge the way that the trial chambers will work, to give you a kind of mini boss there, to also combine that mini boss with the way that raids work. So in case you're curious, when you get one of these bottles, you have two choices. You can take it to a village and do your normal thing. I love that now this is a choice. Previously when you had the bad omen effect, it lasted for an hour and 40 minutes, 100 minutes, and you had no choice but to avoid villages or to effect, you know, effectively go for a raid. Now you can choose to start a raid by drinking one of these in a village. As you can see, this will start a 30 second countdown. Mojang have decided they don't really want to have uh, totem farms in the game anymore, and so this 30 second cooldown is a way to make sure that average players just have to wait a tiny bit and prepare their defenses, whereas uh, farming players, you know, still can do their thing. It's just significantly harder now, and at least, uh, you know, it's, it's more slow and time scaled, which I think is fair. I think fighting this boss to get a totem undying is meant to be the way that the totem works. In fact, some would argue even that is too easy. But yeah, the way the raid works is kind of a boss, right? Everyone agrees with that. However, there is now effectively another raid-like entity which you can get by drinking these ominous bottles, but below ground instead. Because if you find yourself in a trial chamber and then decide to drink the bad omen, then you'll get the bad omen effect for that full 100 minutes again. And then when you go to your first trial chamber that hasn't already been activated, do you know what will happen to it? This is gonna be scary. This is my first time. I'm kind of, I'm kind of excited. But do you know what will happen to it? Oh, it hasn't happened yet. Did I clear out this trial chamber or something? This is scary. It's my first time. Whoa! And now we're gonna get more enemies with the goal being to make a bigger challenge. So normally a trial chamber, I would say, has six uh, separate uh, spawners, uh, mobs that spawn for each one of these. Uh, but I'm guessing it's going to be a lot more. Also, I really should not be. <laughs> Pro tip, you don't. You aren't immune from the damage from the wind burst enchantment. And so you can, in fact, die from this if you're not very scrupulous. And you better believe I'm not being very that. Let's eat the enchanted golden apple and let's uh, finish these guys off and show you what the reward can be. Yeah, it's actively painful to knock these guys into the air if you don't have a ceiling above you. But you better believe it's so satisfying for landing that next hit. There we go, by the way. There's a whole nother one that's just activated. There's some poison sparkles coming out of it too. But I don't care. I'm just here to get my damage in and eventually get my reward. Hopefully. No, nope, doesn't look like it. Do you see this, by the way? There's a weird green particle effect that has appeared that has, for some reason, caused some slimes to spawn where the spiders used to be. Very strange, right? In fact, there's another slime here. There is no slime spawner in this uh, trial chamber. Let me assure you of that much. And let me also assure you that I think I've now cleared the place out. No, more waves. More craziness. It took me forever to find these spiders because they're hanging out on the ceiling with these weird XP bottles below them. What the heck is that? Oh, they must be launching the potions. What a bizarre new thing Minecraft has. That is absolutely fascinating, but I have defeated it, and so now I get improved rewards. So for all that work, I got two steak, but then on this one, I got an ominous trial key. So ominous trial keys are a much improved version of the trial key, and uh, you remember when Mojang said that we wouldn't be able to get the heavy core just by using trial keys? That's because they meant we'd have to use these instead. So how do these work? Well, instead of using them in any old vault, which by the way, vaults have been massively changed, you use these in, again, you can see there's one up there. I don't I have a way to get to it, but I see a very scary mob with her diamond armor on the way to me right now, so let's run away from that. As you can see right here, Mojang has gone through a lot of effort to differentiate the regular vault from the trial spawners. It used to be they were both kind of blocky structures. No matter how they were changing the texture, they would still be confused. This is a much easier way to tell where a trial spawner is. And then every trial chamber has a chance of having one of these, it seems. These are much, much rarer. But obviously, if you come in here with an ominous effect, then you can loot the ominous vault. And so if I can just get up here, let's open it and let's see what's inside. I got a banner pattern, a diamond. I 
I got some arrows, and that's it. So there is still just a chance of one of these ominous keys giving you the, uh, the heavy core, but long story short, you now have to fight the second type of boss that comes from the ominous effect. It's not just raids, it's now ominous spawners, and then you have a chance of getting the, the mace, and that is pretty wild if you ask me. And so, Minecraft's hardest to obtain weapon has just gotten harder yet. To repeat the process for you, you need to get the bad omen effect either from defeating a raid captain or from going to a trial chambers and defeating spawners until you are lucky enough to get one. Then with that luck, you need to go and fight, uh, you know, use it to turn a regular spawner into an ominous spawner. Then you need to fight that ominous spawner and you have a small chance of getting a key. And when you have that small chance of getting a key, you can use that small chance of getting a key for a small chance of getting the heavy core, which you can combine with a breeze rod to get the mace and so this is insanely powerful made even more insanely powerful by the enchantments that you can get on it this is the definitive best weapon in minecraft uh for everything besides certain pvp encounters where no armor is used and no bouncing around makes sense but that is where the mace is at there is a lot i have to say about these enchantments but for now now you know what's going on with them let's talk about the new potion effects real quick there are four brand new potions that they have added to this update and what's fascinating about it is not all of these potions are good for you. So take for example the new Breeze Rod Potion. All of these potions work by taking a water bottle, turning it into an awkward potion using a Never Wart. This is how almost every potion in the game works so far. And then you add a Breeze Rod and you'll get the Potion of Wind Charging. When you die with this effect you will emit a Wind Burst so it's mostly not for you but for enemies in the Trial Chambers. The Potion of Weaving is interesting because enemies with this uh, will spread cobweb blocks across their, across their death. However, non-player entities with this effect can walk through cobwebs at normal speed. So it is a really fun way to boost anything that isn't a player, but again, not so useful for you. Then oozing, affected entities will spawn two slimes across death, and then finally we have infested, which is affected entities have a 5% chance to spawn one to two silverfish when hurt. That sounds like it does affect players, and it's also the easiest potion we've ever had in Minecraft. It is a stone block. You might be able to work out this is a breeze rod, this is a cobweb, this is a slime block, but it blew my mind to learn that you can brew using stone now, but you really can, and you'll get Get this uh, brand new potion of infestation. Do you really want this in your life? I don't know, but it's a cool new effect. There are a couple of other effects you can't brew, of course, too, but this one is incredible to me. And so those are the main features in the 1.21 snapshot. There are of course a lot of other things in here, such as the weird Herobrine face, which you can see in the new trial chambers. They've added some new rooms and redesigned almost all of the existing ones. They've made it so when you fly with the Elytra, you no longer will deal damage to enemies like you've been falling with the mace. That is a nerf that I think makes a lot of sense. And uh, also at this point, I think we have just a few remaining big questions. One of those is still, what the heck is the entrance room here for? They have just now said that yep this is the final feature but that that uh, you know this is indeed something which i think is worth addressing in its own right because that be you know the final feature having been added to this uh snapshot doesn't mean that they're done with development it is still just march we don't even have a title for this update yet there is still a lot of development to be done for minecraft 1.21 but it won't take the form of brand new fully new features but instead will be the improvements and the tweaks to the existing ones so things like the mace could still do with some further tweaking things like the ominous trial key and how you find them could still do with a lot of improvements but the thing that interests me most is this ominous bottle this is the most fleshed out we've seen minecraft make a new feature and honestly one of the cleverest things they've done in a while improving an existing feature in a massive way while also making it apply to the brand new structure i think that's great by itself but you know what else i think i think the idea of ominous blank is a really good thing that they could apply to basically anywhere and you know what's convenient about this seed having <laughs> trial chamber go right through the ancient city portal it's a fun reminder that not only is the ancient city portal still there and still eventually you're going to do something you know they they put it into your existing worlds i believe on purpose so that it can go somewhere and have so, you know again when they do add the functionality to it you won't have to explore in a brand new world you'll be able to find it in your existing ones that is my belief but beyond that i think they could make an ominous version of the in the same way a vault could work in every structure like the end city etc the ominous bottle could make any encounter more challenging imagine an end you know an ominous ancient city, how much harder the shock shriekers could be if it was just a bit more ominous, but also how much better your rewards could be too. Now that we have a realistic way to kill the warden, maybe that actually makes sense to have an ominous warden fight. I think that would be wildly fun by itself. Uh, but what I also think could be fun is taking basically any structure in the game and saying if you go in there with the ominous effect, it will be more interesting and more challenging. I think this update serves as a very clever way to, oh god, okay, there's finally one coming. 
but I think this update serves as a clever way to introduce concepts that can be expanded upon later, something which Minecraft sort of does need, because whenever they introduce a brand new feature fully from scratch, people say it looks mod-like or they're not excited by it, but already I think people's heads will be turning about what you could do with this ominous bottle in other structures, and also about how these vaults could be used in other structures, and I like this idea that they might be able to execute on those later when they have a really good idea. In the same way that they added the brand new armor trims, and now there's a new armor trim in the trial chamber, having new things that make new updates even cooler and even more sought after is something that is a good thing in my opinion. Do I think it's good that the update is finished uh, in adding new features? A part of me says no, but I also think the trial chambers was always going to be the big focus. I think there are lots of tweaks that they should be making, in fact I could probably make a whole video about those, and now that Mojang have explicitly said they're looking for the community feedback, I think now is the time to talk about the existing features and how they could be improved. So let me know in the comments down below. What do you think about the update so far? Do you think there's anything that clearly needs to be changed or could be massively improved? If so, I would like to know. With that said, thank you very much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next time. Wait, see you in the next one, which is next time. Or you can check out my live stream, I guess.